Business Transitions. And today I have a couple of my colleagues with me, Adam Goldsmith, who covers Indiana, Doug Sellen, who covers the uh, western part of Ohio, and myself, who covers the eastern part of Ohio, Western PA, and then we all kind of cover a portion of Kentucky. Uh, in today's uh, topic, gentlemen, we're going to talk about um, selling your practice and then what happens with patients. Do uh, patients end up leaving? Things like that. So, uh, Doug, you want to kick us off on that? Sure. I mean, you should always expect the worst, and attrition could happen, but in our years and years of doing this, and not only as practice transition consultants and brokers, but also in our previous lives and financing these types of transactions, the attrition rate is usually no more than 5%. Um, it could be more depending on what you do to the practice after you take it over. Um, but keep in mind the average age or life of a patient is typically seven years. And what that means is people move, people move in, people move out. And that's what's happening, not just in your practice, but in your community. But as you also see that the current owner, depending on the, the age in which they're in their practice, the number of years, they may have stopped marketing some time ago. So that patient base could be uh, aging as well. So as they are gonna be rolling off, you're gonna be rolling in new patients by your marketing efforts, which would greatly offset any type of attrition you would be experiencing. Yeah, good points. Adam. Adam, anything to to add to, to attrition? Um, I know you uh, you help you help manage a, a practice for a long time, so you've got a lot of experience in the front of the house. Yeah, absolutely. I've got a couple kind of scenarios to to cite from personal experiences. One of which was uh, helping my father sell his practice. You know, when you get up into the sixties, fifties, sixties, and seventies, it's not it's not uh, alarming to think that from your patient's perspective that you may one day sell. I mean, you're not going to practice forever. And so they kind of, I think, sort of expect it at a certain point that, you know, there, there's going to be a new dentist arriving maybe in the next three to five years. Um, and, you know, I think what we do really well is matching retiring dentists with uh, new dentists to take over the practice that kind of have a really, um, you know, similar outlook on practice philosophy and treatment, quality of care. Um, I think we do a really good job of making sure that attrition is mitigated as much as possible just for the simple fact that we do a good matchmaking service. Um, another, another obvious uh, thing when it comes to, you know, attrition is not shaking up too much when you buy a practice, maybe retain the staff, especially the hygiene staff. I think that's really critical. Um, you know, not changing softwares and having billing issues, just trying to keep things the status quo as much as possible. Um, that way, that doesn't seem like there's a lot of interruption in service or quality of care, and then gradually kind of implement your systems and processes and things of that sort. Yeah, good point. I think also it can be really a breath of fresh air when a new dentist or younger dentist comes into the practice. Um, you know, you may lose some patients, but I think to Doug's point, you know, a lot of the older dentists have stopped marketing, right? They're, they've got their patient baits that's set. They're not marketing anymore. The buyer comes in, starts marketing the practice, reaches out into the community, things like that. So, you know, there's stats on what percentage of patients are trite when a practice is taken over, but I don't think there's as many stats that talk about how many patients, new patients come in when a, uh, a new doc takes over and starts putting in marketing efforts and reaching out into the community and things like that. So I think that's that's a big thing that everybody looks at. Oh, how many patients am I going to lose because I'm taking over the practice? But it's really how many patients are you going to gain? Because, you know, for all the points that we've all stated. One last point I want to mention, too, is maybe trying to at least at first maintain the same insurance coverage and, and be in network with the same insurance companies. That way, the patients don't feel like, oh, there's a new dentist come in and he he or she does not take my insurance, I'm going to go find someone that does. If you can kind of mitigate that um, re re uh, objection, I think mm -hmm. that will also bode well for re retaining patients. Yeah, good point. All right. Well, um, if you want to learn more, please visit our website, pmagroup.net. And certainly don't forget to hit the like button uh, and share the video with your colleagues. We appreciate your time.